Hey everyone, welcome to Transient, I'm Aitan Writer. Today we're going to recreate Inner Light by Fantasia. This is a dance floor tune from 1991 with a very special sound. So in this tutorial we're going to go over a lot of the synth sounds because the track is mainly made out of that. We're also going to go over some special techniques like using distortions and some stereo spreading tools. And of course, some really interesting sounds like this one, for example, which was the one that made me want to do this reproduction. Without further ado, let's just dive in and see what it's made from. So the kick drum is playing a pretty old school pattern. It's made out of a simple 909 kick, which I've added a little 808 to for that extra low end. And I've set it with a longer attack because we don't really need its transient. That's gonna come from the 909. The glue compressor is giving it some extra punch and the decapitator is there for some character. Next up is this bass line. As you can hear, it's made out of a square wave with a little bit of noise. I wanted it to sound random, just like the original, so I've used this auto pan tool. Usually what I'll do is use a strong amount to find a rate first and then set it back down. I've also used this bit crusher plugin. It really helped with achieving the lo-fi sound. And last, a few tape plugins for even some more old school character. The bass also has another second sub layer. And like the original bass, it's also made out of a square wave. This is how the bass sounds without it. And if I add it, you can really notice it. Then if I also add the kick drum, you'll notice how the sub bass is actually providing the kick with a tone. Next up is the tom drum. It's made out of a sine wave and a square. They're both going through a filter envelope and a pitch envelope for that punch. And for that extra randomness, I've used these two LFOs. You can of course download the full project with the preset and check it out. And last, I've added some chorus and a tape plugin. Next important thing is the auxiliary effects. This is being sent into a large reverb. Here you can see the reverb setting. This is what it sounds like without, and this is with. Another very important auxiliary effect is this isotope stereo imager. It's receiving signals from a few of the track's channels and by that helping the track sound much wider and bigger. Next up is the clap. This has also got a pretty interesting stereo effect going on. Here you can hear the left and this is the right. And together they sound like this. The hi-hat in this track is very subtle. I've actually used three hi-hats to reproduce it. Next is the rim shot. I've set it to the right pitch and used a big reverb on it. Try using a reverb with pre-delay to maintain a sound punch while making it spacey at the same time. Next up are these percussive sounds, which I've had to get really sounding right by using all these effects, like EQs and beat crushers. Here's the crash sample. In order to reproduce that one, I've also used two crashes. This is the main one, and this one is for some extra high frequencies. Adding a second layer for some extra high frequencies can sometimes be much better than using an EQ, which in many cases can really distort the sound. The second layer might make it seem a bit more natural. Next up is this loop. So this was not an easy task at all. The only thing to do here is to pick the right sounds and layer them on top of each other and making sure they're playing the right rhythms. I started with editing an Amen loop and giving it some old school MPC SP1200 type character using this Bit Crusher plugin. And then I've chopped it up even more and added some more snare hits, which actually gave the loop some more dynamics. And then added a bunch of shakers to get the high frequency sounding right. If you want some extra stereo separation in the mix, you can use many techniques, like using almost the same sample on both sides with a slight variation. One variation can be having the left playing a different note than the right channel kind of like a chorus effect, and the other can be just playing with the starting point of one of the sides. The idea is just to have subtle differences between the left and the right speaker. This is the track's main lead. 
it's also based on a square wave going through a low pass filter with a lot of distortion and some reverb before the tape effect which makes it all sound a bit more noisy and now for my favorite sound of the track this acid sequence the first two notes are pretty simple they're based on this pulse wave oscillator going through a low pass filter with a lot of resonance and what gives the sound its movement is of course the filter envelope just a little bit of tack and decay and this is your classic acid sound and here's where it gets interesting this was actually the sound that caught my ears ever since I've heard this track and made me want to try and reproduce it and the secret behind it is the resonance the sound is going through a lot of distortion that's why the resonance is actually bringing out some sort of note and the idea is to have just enough of it not too much but not too little you really wanted to emphasize the cutoffs movement and once you've done that all that is left is to set the cutoff modulation envelope just right and send them all to the same auxiliary reverb the track starts with this pad which was reproduced from these two different sounds one is this simple synth sound also made out of silent one and it's based on a detuned sawtooth oscillator with an EQ to bring out all these low frequencies then I've used the same preset just on this one note because I wanted this specific one to have more attack here is the main layer to reproduce it this simple guitar sample is used with a second lower octave layer produced by this grain delay and then it's going through the chorus effect some reverb and a flanger I've used the same technique of setting the feedback very high adjusting the rate just right and once you know what you're going for you can bring it back down again I find this technique very helpful in almost every synthesizer or plugin I use now this sound is very hard to get right because it's based on a sample so I just found something that was close enough you can of course look for the right sample but because it's a human voice it may take you something like a lifetime and then I've automated this pitch shifting effect and last for some more pitching down effect I've used this echo with an automation on the delay time for that down lifting effect and just before I thought I was done with the reproduction I noticed these two special effects this one is a tom drum going through some distortions and this is a noise again the resonance is what's giving it its notes and the reason that it's playing two different notes is because of the key tracking this may seem like little sounds but this is what the track sounds like without them and here you can hear how much they actually add to the overall feeling you can hear it here too and even when the track gets really messy the track ends with the master channel being pitched down if you want to get it sounding like the track it's better to use something like complex instead of repitch that way the original pitch remains untouched quick reminder the project file and the sound are available for free in the link below if there's a song you'd like us to remake or a technique you'd like to learn please let us know in the comment section below for more videos like this one subscribe to our channel see you next time and now let's listen to the full reproduction